welcome. The objective of this video is to teach you how InDesign works and how it thinks to get started. Through that thinking process, you'll be able to basically solve any problem. I use the same technique, whether I teach Illustrator, Photoshop, film editing, it's the same philosophy. You have to understand how the software itself thinks, just like a language. So first thing we're going to do here is get started by making a new file. Now, very important to understand, anything about a file is on the file menu. These are all my menus. So you want to get in the habit of thinking to yourself based on these choices, what do I want to do? I want to make a new file. Macintosh, it's command key N. The command key on your keyboard, it looks like this. Windows would be control N. So I can simply hit a simple shortcut to make a new file. Now before we go further, let's understand the file menu a little bit better. Anything about a file is under the file menu. File new, file open, file new, open recent, share my file, print my file, save my file, etc, etc, etc. Now notice that these options here are gray because I have no file open, therefore there's no file to save. So you want to get in the habit of understanding based on these choices, what do you want to do? So again, we're going to make a new document, new file document, command N. Here's my new document layout. Now, important step here. Designers pretty much work in points and pikas. You don't have to work in points and pikas. You can work in inches or centimeters. But designers throughout the world work with points and pikas. So if you want to take a note, there's 72 points to an inch, 72 points PTS equals one inch. There's six points to a pica, P-I-C-A. There's six picas to an inch. Therefore, 12 times six is 72. Makes sense, okay. So we're gonna create a simple letter size document with one page. Now, the most important thing to understand here, we're not gonna do a facing page document. A facing page document we use for magazine layout. We're going to do a single page document. But the most important thing to consider inside this dialog box, dialog boxes are your friends. Based on these choices, once you're in a dialog box, what do you want to do? If you're not sure what to do, let's find out what not to do. We don't want it to cancel. So we're going to select something called master text frame. Now, very important to take note on. Anytime you're making a new document inside of InDesign, you always want to have this master text frame selected. And I'll explain that in just a second. So I hit OK. OK, we're now inside our InDesign document. This is an 8 and a half by 11 page here. Now, how did we get here? We hit File, New, Command, N, or Control, N, Windows. We deselected facing pages. We selected the master text frame, and we hit OK. This right here is your master text frame. The first thing we're going to do, good habit to get into, is saving the file. File, save, command key, S, save file. We're going to call this project version 2, version 3, version 4, version 5. Now before I go any further here, I just want to share with you that we're working with essentials up here on the top right. This is just different workspaces that Adobe products have. As an example, if you're doing a book layout, you would select book layout. These just bring up different palettes to the right. So to keep it simple here, we're simply going to select essentials on the top right hand corner. Okay. Now it's a good habit to get into as you make changes, save changes. So we made a new document. We asked it to have a master text frame. This right here is your master text frame. In order to select it, I hold like command key, shift key with my mouse and click. That's command, shift, click, command key, shift key, click, selects this text box, activates that text box. Now I can put some text in here. So I can basically just select the text box, go to my typing tool, which is the letter T. The tools are over here to the left. So I can just hit T for type and start typing. I'm going to type in some text. Now, good habit to get into here. I want to select all my text in this particular case. Command key A selects all the text in my typing tool. And here's a super shortcut for this. Command key shift greater than key less than key, just like fourth grade math class. Command shift greater than key makes the type bigger. Command shift less than key makes the type smaller. Now I can also put the type in the center with a shortcut. Command shift 
C for center, command and shift R for right, command and shift L for left, command and shift C for center. Now, of course, this is the property palette for that selected text. I could come up here to align that to the center or align that to the left or align that to the right. But I think it's just as simple to get to you know the shortcuts. I can also increase my font size in the property palette. So right now I'm going to hold down the command key for a second to deselect. If I hold down the command key, notice it turns into a selection tool. This is my selection tool. I can hold down my command key and deselect the text box. Select the text box, deselect the text box, select the text box, deselect the text box. File, save, save file. Good have to get into make a change, save a change. Once again, my objective is to teach you the way the software thinks based on very important steps, based on what's selected. In order to be affected, it must be selected. Students, number one frustration with the software program is not selecting something. How do we select? We select by holding down the command key. Here's my tool palette over here. Here's my selection tools. Here's a typing tool. Here's a frame tool. Now frame tool we're going to be using a lot in this program. Frame tool creates frames that could be either a text box or a picture box to contain pictures or graphics. Very important step. Now, I'm going to reduce the size of this type. In order to affect the type, I need to select the type. I can highlight it, plan A, plan B, as I can select all command A. Command and shift C puts it in the center, command shift L puts it on the left. So I'm going to replace this text. Anything about type would be under the type menu. Anything about type is under the type menu. Type, we're going to fill this with placeholder text. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel and type a bunch of words here. So under the type menu, fill with placeholder text. And that's what it did. So if I select it all, I can decrease command shift less than, command shift greater than, command shift less than, command shift greater than. Okay. Now, another technique, if I deselect the box here, Box is selected. I'm holding down the command key. Keep the command key held down as long as you want to select something. Let go of the command key to deselect something. So I'm going to click off the box. I'm going to hold the space bar. Space bar, grab the page, move the page. I can hold down the space bar, grab the page, move the page. Grab the page, move the page by holding down the space bar. Make sure you're not selected inside of your text box because if you hold down the space bar, you're going to delete a word. Make sure you're not selected inside the text box. Okay, so let's understand frames and what frames do. Frames basically create either picture boxes to contain picture or graphics or text boxes. I'm going to go to the frame tool. The frame tool is right here left. I can get to the frame tool. Notice that these tools here have single letter commands. F for frame, T for type, P for pen, and for pencil, because P can't be for pencil, because P is for pen. So once you want to be alphabet, the shortcuts are right here. So I'm going to select the F key. Now, important step here. If you're in a typing, if you're in here, and you hit the F key, you're going to create the letter F. So I want to make sure I don't have the text selected by holding down the command key and clicking off the box. Clicking on the box, off the box. So we're going to hit the F key to create a frame. We're going to click drag to create a frame. Now, whatever you select in this program, very important step here, in my property palette, this is the property palette. This is the X position, the Y position. The X position is, goes across the page. The Y position goes down the page. Zero, zero is right here in the top left-hand corner. So if you were to put in zero, tab, zero, that would put that on the top left because this is where zero is right here. This is zero at the beginning of my page horizontally and beginning of my page vertically. X is horizontal, Y is vertical. So if you wanted to move this selected box, this selected frame down one inch, two choices you have. You can type in six, which is one inch, because there's six pikes to an inch, or I can undo that, command Z, command Z, 
on does the last thing that I did, command Z, or I can put in inches by typing one quotation mark. That's going to move that box down one inch. Now, this box does not have a fill. It doesn't have a stroke. If you come over here to the palette to the right here, I have something called swatches. I'm going to click swatches and take my swatches and drag it out. This disengages it from the palette here. I selected swatches and dragged it out. Now, with this frame text box selected, I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to pick this cyan color. Notice it filled it with cyan. If I hold down the command key, I can select the box and move the box. Hold it down the command key, select the box, move the box. Okay. So what is the width and height of this selected box? Right now it's not selected, so I have no property information. Right now it is selected, so I do have property information. So this box is 19 picas, 10 and a half points. So let's make this box exactly, let's make this box three inches by three inches. How would I do that? Three, quotation mark, tab, three, quotation mark, return key. This box is now three by three, or 18 picas by 18 picas, because there's six picas to an inch. Six times three is 18. Now, important step here. If you look at your tool palette at the bottom here, this is telling you that this is filled with blue, but it's stroked with nothing. Stroke is the outline. You can exchange that. You can toggle back, back and forth between the fill and the stroke. Illustrator works exactly the same way by hitting the X key. X to select fill, X to select stroke. Right, I'm on fill, right, I'm on stroke. I'm doing this with the X key. It toggles between the two. So now I have stroke selected, so I can give this a black stroke. This box now has a black stroke. In the property palette up here on the top, I could change the weight of the stroke to four points or I can change the weight of the stroke to 70 points, which is almost an inch. Let's make this 18 points, which is a quarter inch. So this box, this selected box, is filled with blue, stroked with black. So how would I fill it with red? If you come over here and select red, it's not going to change the fill because I have the stroke selected. Aha! So I have to hit the X key to exchange down here in the bottom left hand corner. The X key exchanges to select the fill. Now I can select the fill with red. If I hit the X key again, now I can stroke it with yellow. So this selected keyword selected box is filled with red stroked with yellow. If you don't want to stroke it, simply select the stroke by hitting the X key and hit the forward slash key, the same key as the question mark key. Forward slash makes it none. So because I had command Z, command key Z, forward slash makes it none because I had the stroke selected. However, if you hit the X key and hit the forward slash key, that's going to give it no fill. Right now it has no fill, but it has a stroke of yellow. If you hit the X key again, now I have the fill selected. X key again. Now I have the stroke selected. So I can stroke this with I can stroke this with pink. I can stroke it with blue. I can stroke it with black by selecting it over here. Okay? Let's hit the X key again and let's fill this with blue. X key again and stroke it with red. Red property palette. Four points. Hold down the command key, deselect. Select, deselect. Select, deselect. Make a change, save a change. Command 